glory, glory, glory. We will not miss the moment where the Spirit of God will minister to us tonight. We will not delay. Hallelujah. And uh, we have brethren coming already. Praise the Lord. Everybody is welcome. Praise God. And uh, as I turn this over to our MC, praise God. Amen. I just felt the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh. I felt the Holy Ghost. That is the gift of God. Amen. So, uh, praise the Lord, Brother Chavis will lead us tonight, and I want to flow with him. Praise the Lord as he leads the service, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a special day for us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's
blessed. We need you right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's prepare. Oh God, our Lord God, our hearts for revival. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. We know that there will be healing. There will be miracles. There will be deliverance in this place. Hallelujah. Because there is a purpose. Hallelujah. An overflowing purpose in this place. Revival is going to happen. Do you agree, church? the name of the Lord. Before you are seated, brothers and sisters, let's open our Bibles in the book of Psalms 85 verse 6. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 85 6. Will thou not revive us again that thy people might rejoice in thee? Oh God, hallelujah. There is there will be a revival. Come on. How can we have a revival if you're so quiet? Speak your heart out right now. Hallelujah. Are you excited? This is a special day for us. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, we're expecting uh, more visitors to come, and we still have a couple of minutes to. Uh, uh, you may you may uh, sit down for a little while, but uh, I'm sure you'll be standing. <laughs> Praise God! In a in a few moments. Praise the Lord. So uh, tonight we'll. Uh, be celebrating the Holy Ghost revival. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Church! <laughs> we'll be celebrating Holy Ghost revival and also celebrating the uh, ninth Thanksgiving church anniversary. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we are gathered together. Praise God to worship you, to give you glory and honor. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. John 7 38 says, He that believeth on me is the Lord speaking here. As the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It will be overflowing tonight. Come on, church. But we have to. To condition your heart. Because the Bible is in your heart. It's not here. It's not at the back side, it's in your heart. Amen. And when we have revival in our heart, the Holy Ghost will move. Okay. Let's keep a little more fire. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We do not have diesel engine here. We have a gas engine, a jet engine, so we need to. <laughs> we have a little time, church, so lift your hearts to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. As I will request our pastor to utter an opening prayer and maybe greet the, the church before we proceed. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Willie Mahanuka. Praise the Lord. Wow, look at that. The Holy Ghost is the gift of God. And I will, I will come in tonight, brothers and sisters of the Lord. Amen. In the presence of God, as we thank God for nine years. 
God is being faithful and uh, faithful to His people. And I'm just excited tonight. I cannot wait that our evangelist will come and preach for us. All right, so I will come. I welcome everybody. Uh, we have still people coming, I believe. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, I welcome you all. Uh, praise God. And also tomorrow, we have our schedule there. So take note of that. But we will not delay because I'm just excited. Uh, the, the Holy Ghost is just bubbling in my heart. Amen. 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 God bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you've given us the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That we can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives us the utterance. This is a heavenly language that you have prepared for all of us. If we will just yield to you tonight. So as we begin the service, Lord, we would like to open this in prayer. Believing, Lord God, that you will increase our faith to believe. Hallelujah. Praise God of your promises. Especially, oh God, amen. The promise of the Holy Ghost. We love and appreciate you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say amen. amen. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Uh, once again, welcome to uh, Faith Revival Center Church of Edmonton, hosting our uh, uh, Holy Ghost Revival. And I believe there is a, a wonderful message uh, that is in store for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I think it would be good if you can praise the Lord one more time.
different offerings and uh, to introduce uh, the speaker. Amen. It's the Lord. Wow, it's amazing. We have this wonderful opportunity to worship God through our giving. Amen. 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 We know that God has given us generous heart Amen. to support the work of the Lord. Yes. I even mentioned to you that the reason why we Jesus Christ was born. Somebody give, you know, the three wise men, one give gold, frankincense, and mayor. Yes. And what's that for? Because we know that that time Persecution will come when, in fact, many children die. That's right. But they will be, you know, they will escape going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they need money. <laughs> they need money <laughs> in their travel Amen. and stay there for many years. And the same thing with the ministry. I mean, how God can send us more evangelists and missionaries and preachers? Yeah. But thank God that God has given us a generous heart. Amen. Amen. And I know that to you, brethren, you cannot outgive God. Amen. The more you give, the more you see. Oh, Mary. <laughs> the more you give, the more you see. Yes. Hallelujah. The more you give, the more you see. Oh, there's no revival with the instrument. I want them to learn. The more you give, the more you give. It's always about God. You know, we have you are great. All right, Father God of heaven, we humbly come before you tonight. It's amazing that you have given us an object lesson. Praise God for us to learn. Especially, Lord, you give yourself. Amen. On the cross of Calvary for us to be saved. And our sins will be forgiven. We cannot repay what you have done. We are on our way to hell, but you have saved us. You have instructed us, oh God, amen, to rejoice and to serve you faithfully. So tonight, Lord, I declare blessing me upon your people who gather here together tonight. Give us the gift of the Holy Ghost. Help us to understand spiritual things. Lord, that tonight we will talk to the source, the power, which is the power of the Holy Ghost. We will not operate, uh, amen, on the flesh, but we will operate in the spirit. In Jesus' name. Bless your people, bless your churches, oh God. In Jesus' name. All God's people say amen. All God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Tonight, amen. Thank you so much. And I think this is now the time. I don't know if our our uh, district uh, secretary is here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the hands up. Oh, the hands up. I'm sorry, man. I didn't see you. Okay, so actually, I really want to introduce our speaker tonight. And uh, praise the Lord. We are so happy all the pastors are here, somewhere here, the pastors' wives. Ministers, they're just scattered, but tomorrow we'll gather together again, and with uh, you will eat with John, okay, at 1 one thirty. Uh, yeah, we have the church uh, evangelistic service, and then we have early dinner, so be here to, tomorrow, but we'll start 9 o'clock, all right, tomorrow, so praise God, by this time, uh, words from our uh, this uh, is Dari, Amen, and then introduce our speaker tonight. Uh, amen, Reverend McGrath. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be with God's people. Amen. Brother and Sister Mahadukin doing a great work here. Amen. And uh, our great evangelist, uh, Brother David Smith, yeah. hearing great reports of people being filled with the Holy Ghost during yeah. this revival. And you know, God's given gifts to the church, evangelists, pastors, apostles, teachers, preachers. So it's uh, it's great when we can have unity and 
when the gifts that are distributed in the church, the ministerial gifts, are used in such a way that we can see revival. And everyone can do their part, whether you're, if you're a teacher, you can't, yes. you, you can't do, necessarily do the job of an apostle. If you're an apostle, you're not necessarily a teacher. But if we're all working together, then God can operate the various gifts. You know, we originally had him scheduled to, to preach at the church that uh, building that I pastor. But, you know, when I realized that this church anniversary was planned in advance, I just said to Brother Carter, we, we, we should just send him over here. And, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. It didn't make sense to split up the people of God. Yes. We have one Lord, one God, one, one faith, and there's one people of God, one body, Christ. Yes. Praise God. And I like the theme of this, this anniversary service, Overflowing. Yes. Because when you recognize that when the prophet Joel spoke about the Holy Ghost, he talked about a pouring out. God will pour out. And so those words speak of liberty. Those words speak of generosity. Those words speak of abundance. And so when, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, God just pours it out. He doesn't sort of measure it out. He just, you know, put a little bit here and a little bit there. But he pours out. So God is pouring out his spirit. It's overflowing. Praise God. Let's give God a praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm probably not the most qualified for to introduce the speaker because I just met him and shook his hand for the first time tonight. But I uh, heard some great things, of course. We heard uh, it was uh, Brother Mark Morgan who preached on last summer camp that spoke very highly of Brother Smith and really encouraged us to have him come. And we're so glad we did that. And uh, so at this time, I just want to get out of the way and turn it over to Brother Smith and just let, let's allow him to be used in the in Jesus' name. I'm going to give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the But God is alive. 
started. We started in Calgary on Saturday night, and uh, we've been preaching every night except Monday night. I had to travel, and so far uh, we've had uh, 76 new people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the very first time. We had 36 refills, and we've had 15 baptized in Jesus' name in the last few days. So, you know what? Tonight ain't going to be no different. I don't know about what I feel, because feels only seven times in the Word of God. I go by what I know. Know it 717 times in the Word of God. You ought to look it up. So I don't go by what I feel. I go by what I know. Pump your neighbor. Say, get ready. You're about to get in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> don't get scared. Lock the door. We're about to have fun up in here. Hallelujah. I give the bishop honor for letting me be here and his son for letting me be here. I'm not Filipino, but I have been to the Philippines a lot of times. I like it when I tell people where I've been in the Philippines and my Filipino brethren tell me, well, I've never been there. That's what I know. <laughs> so, here we go. I've been to Manila. I've been to Maca... Oh, who's from Manila? Come on. You're supposed to scream, you know. I've been to Makati. Uh, I've been to Mindanao. I've been to Bacola. I've been to Baguio. I've been to Iloilo. Yeah. I've been to Devon. Yeah. I've been to Cebu. Yeah. Now I'm going to be for the one that you, none of y'all have been there. You ready? I've been to Jordan. Oh. <laughs> none of y'all been to Jordan. You know why? Oh, you been? Only four people live there. <laughs> You got to go by boat. Am I right? I'm not talking about Jordan, Israel. I'm talking about the Philippines. <laughs> See, I told y'all. Okay, who's been to Jordan in the Philippines? No, Me. <laughs> Only four people live there. But I took a boat, and we had the time of our life. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I'm not Filipino, but I might be. No, I'm a redneck, okay? <laughs> From Oklahoma. <laughs> All right. Let's believe that Jesus is going to do something tonight, okay? Yes. Yeah. Let's believe that. All right. Now, I'm not a long preacher if you preach with me, okay? Yeah. If you preach with me, I'm not a long preacher. If you don't preach with me, I don't got to be nowhere till Sunday. <laughs> I'm not thirsty. I got three bottles of water. I'm not hungry. I ate a power bar. Before I came, and then I stopped by Red Robins and got bottomless fries. So I'm not hungry. Boy, I just made you hungry. <laughs> Get that off your mind. We're about to have fun here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are you excited? Have I talked long enough? You think you know me now? You okay? Yeah. See, the reason I talk so long is because you don't know me, so you're checking me out right now. It's okay. I've been checking you out. I feel okay. All right. Now I like to cut up. So if you're easily offended, come up here and let's pray for you now so you can enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. If you're sick in the mud, come up here and let me pray for you now when you get excited. Because I like to have fun in church. How about you? God likes to have fun. Don't you think so? All right. The Bible said, and there came Jericho. He said, and he went out of Jericho. The Bible said that the disciples, there was a great number of people, but there was blind Bartimaeus. There was blind Bartimaeus, the son of Tiberius, that he set, he set by the highway side begging. And the Bible said that when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, when he heard it, the Bible said he began to cry out. And he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, the Bible said right after that that they got some old prunes in the church. They got some old funny duds. That's what we say back down in the south where I'm from. They got some people that's kind of, you know, dignified. They looked at it and they said, shh. 
They talk, they said, hold your peace. But the, he's my kind of guy. But the Bible said that he even got louder. He cried out the Lord. And Jesus stood still. I want to be able to scream out that he knows my name. That he knows my voice. The Bible said he commanded him and he called for the blind man. Jesus didn't go to the blind man. He called for the blind man. Wow. People wondering, I wonder what the deal was. Every place in the word of God that I saw where God wanted to do something for somebody, they always came to him. Wow. Yeah. He just stood and they came to him. He spoke and it happened. If you want something from him in a minute, you might have to come to him. Call the blind man. He said, be of good comfort. He said, rise. He calleth thee. The Bible said, and he cast away his garment and he rose and he came to Jesus. A lot of people pass over that. But let me show you something. When you had an infirmity in your body, you had to wear a certain kind of garment. When you had a sickness, you had to wear a certain kind of garment. But that man, the Bible said, he cast off his garment and he rose and he came to Jesus. You're saying, I wonder what that means. I'm going to tell you what that means. He had already heard that Jesus was the healer. He said, I'm going to cast off this old rags and this garment. He is a father of lies and 
the truth is it in him. Right now, you want to put your foot on the neck of the devil and tell the devil, I got dominion up in here. You need to tell the devil, I got power in here. You need to tell the devil, you're not going to mess with my money. You're not going to mess with my friends. You're not going to mess with my family. You're not going to mess with my church. You need to put your foot on the neck of the devil. Tell the devil, I got power up in here. Yeah. He said the women go down there. The whole family come 
They're all at the doctor. Doctor said, all right, we're going to pull the plug. They pulled the plug on the man. All of a sudden, he went, Phew! and he sat up and said, what's going on? <laughs>
That's a legitimate question. I could have prayed and she went, or I could have prayed and she went, so I said, sis, do you want to be shorter or taller? church this week and I heard something and, and I promise you their prayer wasn't answered. You know why? Pastor, now if y'all do this here after tonight, don't do it no more. Look how quiet y'all are. <laughs> Almost hear a mouse licking ice at the back of the church. <laughs> Everybody's like, if you do this, don't do it no more and I'll prove it to you. This is what I heard this week. Pastor, yes ma'am. Uh, I have a special unspoken request. I thought to myself, are you kidding me? God don't get all beady eyed and try to figure out what's wrong with you. He says you have not because you ask not. You don't know the scripture, but some people don't do it. So I got a special unspoken request. If I come back in five years, here's what she's going to say. I got a special unspoken request. Ten more years. <laughs> really, you got a special unspoken request because you ain't opened your mouth and said what you wanted. If you want something, you got to open your mouth. Uh, if you want something, you got to say. I can't find out anywhere in the Bible where God got be out and trying to figure out what was wrong with people. I'm cool with being out people. I just ain't ever seen it in the Bible. He just walked up to him and said, what do you have need of? He'd just stand and they'd come. He'd say, what do you have need of? Somebody else would come up and say, what do you have need of? And then that's when he would pray. So if you want something tonight, you got to say it. If you want something tonight, you got to speak it. If you want something tonight, start it. So I prayed. I said, you want to be shorter or taller? I said, but I everybody in the family is tall. She says, I need to be taller. I said, no problem. I said, now I know what leg to pray for. I said, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I said, Lord, let that leg grow out. I love to tell you, I heard like, you know, it is hot. I did. I love to tell you, I felt angels' wings, you know. <sighs> I did. I love to tell you, goosebumps was running all up and down my back. It did. <laughs> I got done praying, and I said, well, she goes, back up. I said, yes, ma'am. I backed up. She took her shoes off and she stood and she went. Mm-hmm. I said, she goes. Mm-hmm. She goes. I'm going. She goes, yep. He did it. I'm like, boom. Ain't gonna be no belly. 
belly rubbing the night. Don't do that. Ain't nobody gonna crawl up on somebody's back and get all up on their back. Ain't gonna be none of that. Ain't gonna be no sneak attack tonight when you're praying and somebody come up behind you and says, Come on! That's not the Holy Ghost. You just scared somebody. Ain't nobody gonna do that. You got the shaking syndrome, go out that door, shake a little bit, and then come back in here and act right. Yes. Come on. Come on. I, I, I done seen all that garbage. None of that's Bible. Yes. That's all traditions of man. You know why y'all grieve with all that? Because every one of you been shook. <laughs> every one of you been all called up on. I mean, every one of you been all called up on. I got the Holy Ghost like a thousand times, Bishop, before you ever stop. <laughs> well, I got it every Sunday. You had no choice in my church to get it every Sunday. You be making up stuff like, see my tie, I see your tie. Get me right here. Ooh, I got it. Get away from me. <laughs> So nobody's going to come on down tonight. Uh, nobody's going to make us do anything that we don't want to do tonight. In a few moments, I'm going to ask everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. Not right now, but in a few minutes. The reason I ask people to bow their head and close their eyes in a few minutes is this reason right here. First of all, I want us to be real with ourselves. Amen. Second reason I ask people to bow their head and close their eyes is because we live in a real nosy world. You raise your hand, you never go, what you do? <laughs> and you talk. And they go, I can't believe you've done that. And you're like, I know. I wasn't even planning that death. Never know. <laughs> We blame so much on the devil. He writes stuff down and says, I never heard that, but it's a good one. And we're going to use it on the next group. <laughs> Dead folks can come up with some lies. <laughs> Third reason. I ask people to bow their head and close your eyes. I want you to say, I came to church tonight, and I'm leaving the same way that I came. Amen. When you come to church, you should leave the same way you came. Every time you come to church, God ought to do something for us. Every time. I don't know nobody here. You, it's ringing a little bit. You can cut it down. I, 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 uh, I don't know nobody here. So I'm going to depend on the church folks. I'm going to depend on the ministry to help. Okay? Right? So, I'm giving instructions. In a few moments, I'm going to ask them a few questions. And then when I'm done, we're all going to stand if we're able. If you're not able, you're not being rude. You're not being mean. You're just not able to stand that. You're okay. Right? And then I'm going to ask the ministry to come and line up across the front. Don't worry, I ain't going to make you do nothing you ain't never done before. We're just going to stand and face the crowd. And then every person that wants God to do something for them, we're going to come down. And we're all going to repent as a family. And then after we repent, we're just going to begin to thank Him. And the Holy Ghost is going to begin to rest on people. Signs and wonders and miracles Hallelujah. are going to begin to happen for people. Jesus tonight is going to touch folks in this house. You say you know that? I know that. Amen. Because here's why. God can not lie. Amen. You good enough for that? Amen. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Never hit down every eye closed. No one's looking around. This is between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody in this house here tonight, uh, you've got pain in your body right now. You've got pain in your body. Would you lift your hand? 
you got pain in your body. Hands are going up all across the building, front to the back, side to side, in both sections. That's beautiful. You can put them down. Before you lift your hand, just listen. Every time you take a step forward, the enemy, the line of the deceiver, Satan by name, tries to push you two steps back. For some, it might be your marriage, or for some, it might be your relationship. For some, it might be your finances. For some, it might be your workforce. For some, it might be your ministry. And every time you try to do something for the kingdom of God, it seems like the enemy comes in like a flood. But you're in this house here tonight, and you're going to be honest. You said, you know what? God, you're standing still, and you're going to help me with a situation. And you're in this house here tonight, and you need a divine intervention. You need God to help you with a situation. Would you lift your hand? And to be lifted all over this building, front to the back, side to side, in every section. That's beautiful. You can put them down. All right. I'm not talking about once saved, always saved. That's not the Bible. That's man-made religion. I'm not talking about accepting the Lord as your personal Savior. That's not in the Bible. That's man-made religion. I'm talking about what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one place, one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And for all the house where they were sitting in period of Clothing tongues black as a fire and set upon each and every one of them, and they were all filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, beginning to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them utterance. Now, if you've never spoke with other tongues, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. That just means it's a gift that comes from God that you haven't received yet. And as far as you know, with your walk with Jesus Christ, you've never spoke that heavenly language like they've done in the Bible. Would you lift your hand? You've never spoke that heavenly language. I see hands. I see hands. I see more hands. I see more hands. I see more hands. I see more hands. Now I see more hands. Now I see more hands. Now I see more hands. Okay. Now there's more coming up. That's beautiful. You can put them down. All right. Last question. Before you lift your hand, listen closely. If the Lord came today, are you ready? If the answer is no, if the answer is I'm not for sure, if the answer is let me repent and move some stuff around, all those answers are beautiful because here's why. The Lord Jesus Christ has not come back yet for his bride. That means that we still have a chance to be renewed or refilled in the gift of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. And you're in this house here tonight and you're going to be honest with yourself and you're going to be honest with God. You're going to say, you know what? I need to be renewed or refueled in the gift of the Holy Ghost. For if he would come tonight, I'm making sure that all is well between him and I. Would you lift your hand? You need to be renewed or refueled. And again, hands are going up across the building. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You can put them down. You can lift your head and open your eyes. Thanks for being obedient tonight. Because I had about 70 or about 70, 75 percent of the building lifted their hands to you know what that lets me know? That lets me know that God has found favor. Not that anything is wrong. But that God has found favor. And when God finds favor in a house, the Bible says that no man comes to the Father except the Spirit brought him. And in that last day, I'll raise him up. So every person that is in this building tonight, you're not here by mistake. You're here because the Spirit of the Lord has drawn us into this house. I told you all ago, nobody's going to call us out. Nobody's going to embarrass us. Nobody's going to make us do anything that we don't want to do. But in a few minutes, we're going to talk to God as a family. Is that fair enough? Amen. Now, I'm giving some more instructions. You might next be next to a friend, a family member, a co-worker, a guest. You might be next to someone you never met before. And you want to come pray. But boy, you don't want to come by yourself. Welcome to the friendliest church in town. Yeah. 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 So, you say, what do you mean by that? I'll show you. You don't want to come by yourself. You just look over, find somebody, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, I want to go pray. Go with me. They'll say, okay. And you both come. There might be people on both sides of you and you're thinking, ooh, I want to get out. But how am I going to get out? There's people on both sides of me. 
It's easy. Tap them on the shoulder, say, excuse me, I need to get out. If they don't move, run over them. And then when they get up, we'll pray for them. Right. I'm kidding. <laughs> I haven't had that last one happen yet, but I'm waiting. Okay. So, no possible way that 75 or 80% can get down to the front. So tonight, we're going to move in dimensions. In a few moments, we're going to stand. I'm going to have the altar team, the ministry. We're going to line up from wall to wall. Okay. Every person that said, I'd like to talk to God about the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Every person that said, hey, I want to be renewed or refilled. To be renewed or refilled doesn't mean you sin. To be renewed or refilled meaning that you're shoring up your salvation for if the master would come tonight. But if you said, I want to be renewed or refilled. So, everybody that wanted the Holy Ghost for the first time, the people that wanted to be renewed or refilled, I'm going to let you in a few minutes come first. And then everyone else that lifted your hand, I'm going to let you come in behind them. And we're going to repent as a family. And we're all just going to start saying, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. No matter what you need, we're going to thank you for the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to break it down country style, redneck style. Okay? Here we go. If all you know is English, and you start speaking another language, congratulations, that's the Holy Ghost, and now you're bilingual. Okay, if you're already bilingual and you start speaking a language you don't understand, congratulations. That's also the Holy Ghost, and now you're trilingual. Wow. If you're trilingual and you start speaking a language you don't understand, you're smart. And that's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is not this. Lord, I accept you as my personal Savior. Right. That is not the Holy Ghost. Right. Every person that received the Holy Ghost in the Word of God, since the Bible said, they heard them speak with other tongues. Yes. It only comes from Jesus Christ. Right. Okay? Right. Are we okay with that? Yeah, Everybody man. good? Yeah. My instructions is almost as long as I preach. Are you ready? Let's all stand if you're able. Okay. Altar ministers and ministry. Our ministry.